I realized that a lot of people and uh, really good topics were discussed, which was overlapping my current presentation. So while sitting here, I had to redo everything. And uh, thanks to the organiza uh, organizers for the last call, I uh, really changed the tabs. This is how it would look like if uh, I wasn't present here yesterday. So it will be numbers, boring companies, percentages, trends, blah, blah. What I did, uh, I got really inspired by uh, the panelists and all the speakers. And this is just a short notice that I do quoted them. Uh, I will, you will see right now, I do quoted them and they really point us to the right direction of the future of FinTech. So in general, in general, we are all aiming at the right direction and we all have the same vision. The problem is we are all looking for API, right? So problem solution. And we need to discuss more about new possibilities to change things. While everybody's talking about Web3, I think that we are so traditional, unfortunately, yeah. And uh, we are still in the Web2 2.5, which means institutions are not keeping up with us, us meaning everybody here. <laughs> and uh, the traditional finance, legal, accounting, bookkeeping, organizational companies and everybody, they need to follow up or they need to pick up the pace. So we had Tony yesterday. Uh, he said that we need to decentralize, hi, huge fan, we need to decentralize the money and uh, we are looking for a solution and we do not want to feed the government with those money. Throughout the conversations, we had different people. For example, Amir, who had many difficulties open up a, an account in US and then with that experience, was it me? No. <laughs> That's good luck in my country, by the way. <laughs> Applause, please. <laughs> so, <laughs> then they, they realized with crypto, they don't need to open up a bank account and they can employ five people in Turkey, I think they did. So it was really easy, one click away. Then you probably won't see from the, from the chairs, but I will read it to you. So there was a question from somebody from the audience. And uh, this person said, are we giving a permission to the beast that we want to beat? Meaning, are we giving permission to the government and to the banks to control and, to, and close the privacy of our incomes? So we are giving them power and we are trying to beat them, right? But then we had Michael here, I think he's one of the organizers, and he said that a really interesting thing that having a green light from the government can help us develop this area, can help us develop the way we think, the way we work. And I think that there's another discussion to be done with that. And uh, later on, you will see that we initiated that, that step at, as native teams. Okay, so we had a representative from Binance and it was a really great statement where he said that privacy and transparency can go both ways. Something like creating a corruption or hiding taxes, right? So it gets back to the first question of the government and the money and feeding the beast. But then Georgian Bank, which is having a great initiative, said that we are going to enable wallet transactions and they are going to be, become a converter where we can actually get the papers and that they have a really great detection process and onboarding process where they can cover all the... Um, new users and uh, they're really ready to move into crypto. But we also had Max who said this, and this is really important. We really need to keep the regular jobs in order to improve the crypto business, which is basically the point of my presentation. So if we want to incorporate our daily jobs in order to feed the crypto system, because we need to earn, we need to eat, we need to sleep, right? <laughs> we need to have something that will be stable, and it is good to support, and this is arguably, uh, the taxes in your country. And then somebody who I think also won a prize from the HR, uh, he was an HR person, he asked, how can we incorporate crypto in e-commerce, and how can we be compliant? 
a lot of different quotes were said. I didn't remember who and how and when, but yeah, it was from the panelist. The last one made me think. We need to be able to use our currency for something. The process will take a lot of education, it will take a lot of time, but we need to start getting the process into the institutions in order to fit the system, in order to make it sustainable, in order to get it reality, right? So that's why I'm saying we are now in 2.5. What we actually trying to do, everybody of us, we are trying to rethink remuneration. Rethink the way we get paid, rethink the way we pay for, for our health, for our education, for our retirement funds, for the future. What we did, and this is something that it's still under development, our current status is that we sorted out the gig economy. The gig economy means you do something, you create NFT, you get paid in crypto, that's it. But what happens with the long-term constant payments? What happens with the normal and the regular job flows and salary payments? That thing should look like this, and this is a reality. We took the first steps, we are currently in 34 countries, and this is something that, in my opinion and vision, and this is something for the investors that uh, didn't mention vision, they mentioned teams, they mentioned solutions, visions. This is something that, in my opinion, can be incorporated and done. So, if we have the payment tools, if we have the gig economy running, what costs us to get it as an employment option? So, we have the cash flow finance, the tax management is here, we are already set up in 34 countries, and the remote worker bank is online. So Georgian Bank is supporting, local banks are also supporting, and I think somebody yesterday said we are able to pay everywhere with a card, right? So this is the new solution, this is how I see the future, and I think that our employments will be done this way. Where are we at currently in the 2.5 version of web is that we do have the local support, that means fit on the ground. People capable of doing finance, accounting, people capable of covering all the necess necessities for us to be officially employed. We have the technology, it's just a ready to go platform so everybody can log in and uh, start their process. What we are missing, probably you won't see from the chairs, we are missing for our crypto partner. So I'm inviting everybody from uh, the crypto companies to join me on a conversation and us. I'm here with my, my colleague Nina. We will be in a tree in the other room where we're going to have a pitch, but also we are around here all day and you can also scan the next QR code where you can find me and directly communicate regarding the employment future of FinTech. FinTech sorry. So, in general, that was my short presentation. I would really love to hear some, some questions from you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation, really cool. Uh, just wanted to clarify which kind of partnerships are you really looking for? So when you say about the crypto partner, can you just talk a bit yeah. more? Like what kind of projects are you ready yeah. to partner with? So what we're looking at is a stable partner that can provide us with a integration to their system, actually, where we are going to be capable of getting that money converted from the crypto world to the real. Uh, so it's a currency. sort of DEX, right? You yeah. want to partner with? Yeah. Okay. All right. That, thank that you. That will be the solution. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you.